What is the worst thing a parent or mentor can say to you? We all know the answer. It's that I'm not mad at you. I'm just disappointed. I'm actually both mad and disappointed. It really does sting all the more, right? Knowing that you let them down. Well, today's video is all about fighters that we love like they are our own children, which is why when they took questionable actions, we as fans were more bummed than anything because we know they can do better and we just hate to see them going down the wrong path. I promise to counter the bad feelings of this one with humor when I can, but let's dive into the times our favorite fighters really let us down. I'm Tommy from MMA On Point. A massive thanks to our Channel Hall of Famers, and these are the 10 most disappointing moments from beloved fighters. Number 10, Towel Gate. Daniel Cormier is without a doubt one of my favorite fighters ever. The guy was entertaining in the cage, entertaining on the mic, and when he wasn't in a Game of Thrones level blood feud with Jon Jones, DC felt like one of the more upstanding citizens in the world of mixed martial arts. On top of that, he was just a likable dude, and he carried that goodwill with him to the scale prior to his light heavyweight title defense against to Rumble Johnson because he would cheat and everybody just collectively shrugged about it. That's not entirely true. A lot of people were outraged and disappointed, especially with the fact that the New York Commission would do nothing about it, besides change the wording of their rules about weigh-ins after the fact. Over champion weight by 1.2 pounds, DC stripped and leveraged the towel that covers his junk to shed the extra weight instead of having to sweat it out in a sauna for an hour with a trash bag on his head while sprinting on a stationary bike while his coaches poured boiling water on him. I probably would have grabbed the towel too. All jokes aside, a seemingly uncharacteristic act by Cormier, but one small enough to certainly not tarnish his reputation too much, which is why it's not higher on this list. Number 9. Tony Ferguson Crosses the Line Of every fighter we talk about today, Tony Ferguson might be the most universally loved. Like, I have rarely come across anybody who isn't a fan of Tony, or at the very least respects him. And while over the years his trash talk has been some of the best stuff in this whole entire sport, just for the pure entertainment of how strange it can be sometimes. This is a rat race, but I'm no rat. I'm a fucking turtle. Ninja Turtle. So which one's your favorite? I like Michelangelo. It was very early in his career that he took a low blow that still makes people cringe to this day. Which is really saying something because some messed up stuff gets said these days and nobody cares. During his time on The Ultimate Fighter Season 13, after a win to secure his place in the semifinals, Tony and the team celebrated the only way you can in the tough house with a whole bunch of booze. If it's gonna go really well. After teammate Charlie Raider poured some water on Tony's head roughhousing, Ferguson got physical in a not-so-fun way that led to yelling and Tony going way too far. Where's your kid at? Don't say it. Hey, where's your kid at? Don't say it. Where's your son? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Man, bringing up a custody situation like that is rough. Ferguson, in interviews after the season, would apologize and said the adrenaline of having just won, the weirdness and stress of being trapped in the house, and the alcohol made for a bad combination. Unfortunately for Tony, the moment has stood the test of time. The only reason it's not higher is because he wasn't exactly beloved at the time that he did it. But yeah, still, rough moment. Number eight, Chris Lieben does what? We've had many an everyman fighter rise to stardom in MMA, but I would argue that Chris Lieben is the ultimate form of that. He seemed like a regular guy with real problems who kept himself in shape and had this inhuman ability to take punishment and brawl. Of course, there's far more to the reality of it and the salt of the earth persona sells Lieben incredibly short, but that perception is what made fans so disappointed in his PED fail against Left Hook Larry, not Chris Lieben taking steroids. The guy just goes out there and doesn't give a fuck, right? Why would he need a performance enhancer? And at the time of this fight, he was rolling again. This was his first big surge after having lost to Anderson Silva, a fight of the night followed by back-to-back -back KOs of the night. Now, Bisping would win without needing to get this one overturned, but people were still surprised and unhappy. Lieben gave the most Lieben of explanations for the fail. He figured it would be out of his system by the time of the fight. Number seven, Michael Chandler gets dirty. For all intents and purposes, Mike Chandler is essentially Captain America. He's super patriotic, he's loyal to perhaps a fault, and he walks around at like 3% body fat. But the one thing that Captain America would never do is cheat. Well, hail Hydra, because that's exactly what Iron Mike did in his bout with Dustin Poirier. And it was the dirtiest kind of cheating. I mean that in the hygienic sense. He tried to fish hook the diamond to secure a choke and was unsuccessful. Not unsuccessful at fish hooking. He did do that. Unsuccessful at the choke. You know, he had his fingers like um, on, on my top teeth where my mouth guard is. So he kind of pulled, tried to get my neck up. To, to lock in the choke. Poirier revealed that he bit down on Chandler's fingers, I suppose the natural fish hooking defense, because when someone shoves their digits in your mouth, biting is fair game, right? But then had a second thought, like I can't be biting people during a fight, and released his grip. The uncharacteristic move by Chandler was the reason the two had a sour exchange immediately after the epic bout. And yeah, a lot of fans were not happy about this one, just really didn't seem to line up with who Chandler is and presents himself as. Number six, Jose Aldo's Strange Bedfellows. All right, I already know there's gonna be people pissed off about this entry, 
history. And you know what? That's totally fine. You can express it in the comments. No big deal. I'm not saying you have to agree, but there were absolutely people that were disappointed in Aldo over this situation. It was a controversial thing picked up by outlets well outside the MMA bubble, so it's worthy of the list. Not to mention, it's just a wild ass story. Like myself, most of you probably don't follow Brazilian politics too closely. But to keep things simple, the nation's then president Jair Bolsonaro refuted the results of the country's 2022 election in which he lost. And he claimed that the voting systems were compromised and that is why. In the heat of all of this, Bolsonaro would leave the country and randomly seek shelter in the Florida home of Jose Aldo, which many hilariously pointed out on social media had a Minions themed room that they thought perhaps the president would have to bunk in. I'm sure he didn't, but it is pretty funny. So yeah, given the state that he left Brazil in, there were some folks that were not too happy with Bolsonaro leaving, nor were they happy with Jose Aldo for welcoming him into his home, or the complete lack of any regret about the situation he would later express. Number five, Jason Miller's descent. You know that Tyra Banks clip from America's Next Top Model that's become a reaction meme? I was rooting for you! We were all rooting for you! How dare you! Tyra just better summarized this entry than I'm going to be able to in the rest of these next 60 seconds or so. If you're newer to the sport, you gotta understand that Jason Miller, well, one, he was very well known because of the MTV show he hosted, Bully Beatdown, was hugely popular, and two, everybody loved this guy. Except the Diaz brothers, of course. He was really interactive with the fans, and he was way ahead of his time in terms of being a brand and a personality in the sport. It really didn't matter how good he was, and considering that he'd garnered that much attention outside the UFC for the most part, it really shows the potential he had. So as things began to spiral, it was just really upsetting for fans. Now, we have talked about Jason's numerous run-ins with the law and substance issues plenty of times on this channel. Honestly, there'd be too much to go through in this entry, but I'm sure you are aware of the stories. With each passing issue and then getting canned from the UFC, his bizarre outbursts, everybody just hated to see it, and you wished he would get back on track in life in general. Forget about fighting. So yeah, Tyra Banks said it better than me. Number four, the real Grease Gate. Yes, while GSP's situation against BJ Penn would end up being much ado about nothing, considering an official wiped the Vaseline off before each round, beloved sexy man Yoshihiro Akiyama would get his first round stop against Sakuraba at a huge New Year's Eve K1 Dynamite show overturned after the Japanese star admitted to applying lotion to his body prior to the bout, but maintained that it was simply because he had dry skin. You know, you can't go out there feeling all dry and crackly. Now look, Sexy Yama likes to keep himself looking good. If there was ever a fighter that was going to put lotion on for cosmetic reasons, it is probably him. But apparently the promotion had backstage footage of Yoshihiro applying six full bottles of the stuff to his body. That is some serious moisturizing. <laughs> Saku would complain how slippery his opponent was in real time to the referee, but nothing was done prior to the TKO finish. Instead, an investigation would lead to an eventual no contest ruling. While not a huge deal over here in the States, this was a massive scandal in Japan, and at the time hurt the reputation of the incredibly popular Akiyama. Number three, hoist PED fail. Look, if you've been following this channel for any amount of time, you know that I love PEDs and wish that everybody in the sport was just completely loaded up with them. But this, this is like Mario kidnapping the princess. This is like McGruff the crime dog going out and selling meth. Hoist Gracie, all buck 180 of him in 1993. The chosen one, meant to show the world that Gracie Jiu Jitsu can defeat size and strength, and that all that matters is their knowledge and technique. Failed a test for anabolic steroids? Are you kidding me? I kid you not. And in the rematch of his epic showdown with Sakuraba of all fights, no less. Just a slap in the face to his very own legacy. Now, to be somewhat fair to Hoist here, we all know that being bigger, faster, and stronger is not never a bad thing regardless of how good you are at jiu-jitsu. Not to mention steroids help tremendously with recovery, and by the time this fight went down, Gracie was 40 years old. Obviously though, none of these things are excuses. And what sucks more is that CSAC didn't overturn the win. Hoist Gracie! So Saku just got screwed all around. To go and pour salt on your own legacy like that a decade after your prime really is a choice. Number two, not you too, Anderson. Yeah, this one sucks a whole bunch, right? If there was anybody who ever just felt like they were naturally gifted physically, it was Anderson Silva. The guy never looked like a bodybuilder, but he was clearly fast and clearly strong. In my naivety of about a decade ago now, I felt pretty sure the spider never used PEDs. But following his return to the octagon after his catastrophic leg break, Silva would test positive for two and 
anabolic steroids. Now, given the horrible injury, it makes sense that steroids could have potentially helped him recover. This has more recently become a hot button issue as Connors recovered from the same injury. And honestly, had he used that as his defense, I think a lot more people would have been on board with the former champ here. But instead, oh boy, Anderson took a page out of JBJ's book and went with the boner drugs defense. Silva said it was a sex drug that was given to him by his buddy who had just recently visited Thailand. Hey, at least that sounds like some exotic substance. Jones' stuff was from the gas station. Insac wasn't having any of it and suspended the spider for a year. There are a lot of fans who still can't get past this fail, and it's reframed Silva's legacy in their eyes. Number one, dictator friends. So here's the thing about Ramzan Gadirov, the head of the Chechen Republic. This guy is a massive fight fan. He's got his own promotion, Akhmat MMA. He is a huge part of the Russian MMA scene, and he's also been accused of nearly every human rights violation we have on the books. Suppressing opposing speech with violence, making opponents disappear, and I'm not talking about a magic trick. Mass detentions and murders, particularly of the nation's gay community, collective punishment for perceived wrongdoings. Long before the recent war with Ukraine, Kadyrov's been a figure human rights organizations have consistently warned about. Now, there are some fighters who have associated with him, like Habib and potentially Hamzat Shemaev, that many have argued really wouldn't have much of a choice in the matter, as they and their families could potentially be in danger if they were to anger the Chechen leader, given where they live. The same cannot be said, though, for beloved fighters like Justin Gaethje, Frankie Edgar, Alexander Gustafsson, Frank Mir, and Chris Weidman, all of which have accepted Kadyrov's invitations. There's actually been a ton of guys who have gone. Those were just the ones that were more generally universally loved by fans, and so created a lot more disappointment. And look, it sounds like most of these were paid appearances, where fighters would get cash for going and teaching a class or whatever and hanging out with Kadyrov for photo ops. So some have dismissed their trips due to the money incentive, but not everybody, because you're still hanging out with somebody accused of pretty much the worst stuff on the planet. Some of these fighters, like Chris Weidman, have claimed they were unaware of the things that Kadyrov had been accused of. I went out there, it was a one-time experience, I knew nothing about Chechnya, I just knew I was going to Russia. While others, like Justin Gaethje, have gone on the record to say that they have no regrets. Or at least, that's what their Twitter account said, if you know, you know. You know who's never been to a dictator's birthday party, though? The editor of this video, Max Randall. Please follow him on all his socials, and be sure to check out his awesome YouTube channel. A massive shout to Ben C for this list concept. He is one of our awesome Channel Hall of Famers, who we of course thank as well. If you want to be like Ben C, hit that join button. We have these weekly writers meetings. Ben suggested this awesome idea and we went with it. Like and subscribe if you had a good time today. Comment down below the times your favorite fighters really disappointed you. And thanks so much for watching. Peace, I'm out of here.